So I've seen a lot of videos about this foot mask that basically makes your entire foot peel off and I wanted to try it out for myself. As you can see, I've got really dry heels and calluses on my toes and I started by soaking my feet for 15 minutes in warm water. Then I put the booties on, kept them in place with some socks and relaxed for 90 minutes. It took about 4 days before I noticed anything but then the dead skin started peeling off and it got pretty bad. After it was all gone, I was really pleased with how soft and smooth my feet turned out and so glad I did. To aerate your sea monkey's tank with the sea monkey's bobbler tool once a day for 5-6 to six pumps. If you miss a day or do 7 pumps, this is completely okay but it's always best to aerate daily when possible to keep your sea monkeys happy. Why do shots hurt so much? Well, when we put this needle in through the skin, it also has to go down to the muscle. This is just a simulation, but once it's in there, we put fluid in. Fail. Why are matcha whisks so fragile? This whisk, also called a chasen, is made out of a single piece of bamboo. The 100 small bristles are carefully carved so they can move through the water and aerate the tea. This creates a beautiful foam on top of the matcha and a lighter and smoother taste. You can soak the whisk before using it to make it more pliable and less likely to break. Some of you have asked if you can kick through a window. Let's see if we can do it. I don't know how these people think I'm going to hold this while kicking it, by the way. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he has broken the car door, but not the car window. That's some strong stuff. Uh, so we tried to break the window by kicking it. Apparently, this is stronger than Thor. So <laughs> I broke the frame. Hippos don't swim. That killing machine from hell is running along the bottom of the river and jumping back up, chasing after these people. I am so scared. More silent props. So a director recently asked me for silent horseshoes. We had a three page scene with actors throwing horseshoes, picking them up, walking and talking. At first I was like, why do we need silent horseshoes? They're, they're not that noisy. Then I got some horseshoes and realized, oh yeah, they're kind of loud. That would step over the dialogue. So I took the real horseshoes to my buddy Doug down the street. That's my buddy Dougie. Hi everybody. He built the mold box and then molded the horseshoe. And after experimenting with several different materials, we ended up using self-skinning rubber, with a hard armature as opposed to and they worked great. The director, the sound mixer both loved the silent horseshoes. I suppose horses probably don't like them, but they're just naysayers. How rare is your body? Only 10% of people have something called Darwin's tubercle, which is the little bump on the outside of your ear. 16% of people can make a roaring noise in their head by using their jaw, and the reason they can do this is because they can control the small muscle in their jaw that normally makes chewing silent, but when it's flexed, it makes that roaring noise. Only 35% of people can gleek, and only 1% of people can do it on demand. Gleeking is pretty much just squirting saliva from under your tongue. I just did it. Only 10% of people have Morton's toe, which is where your big toe is shorter than the one next to it. Only 30% of people can flare their nostrils on demand, and everyone can do it without thinking about it subconsciously, but the muscle is weak because it's barely used, so it's hard for some people to do it. How many of these do you guys have? that changed people's lives. In 2014, Jeremy Meeks was arrested for having a firearm. He never expected that when his mugshot was being taken, it would change his life forever. Mugshots are public and his went viral, not for his crime, but for his good looks. He was sentenced to over one year in prison, but when he was released, many modeling agencies offered him jobs. He then went on to marry Chloe Green, who is the daughter of billionaire Philip Green. So this guy went from felon to billionaire heir all because of one photo. In 2018, Charles Dion McGowell was arrested for having illegal substances. It did not take long for his mugshot to go viral. Everyone was amazed by his very strong neck. He took advantage of this and now has nearly 1 million followers. 
This is just some regular ice, but it's filled with bubbles, and I think it's really ugly. What I want is some beautiful ice that's perfectly clear, and I think I'm going to try making some. To get started, all I need is a regular cooler, and I'll fill it with some warm tap water. I'll bring it up to roughly an inch from the top, and then I can put this entire thing in the freezer. Using a cooler to do this forces the ice to form from the top down. This allows it to freeze without trapping air, and I have to leave it in there for about 36 hours. At this point, it should be good to go, and I can take it out. I'll then flip it upside down, and I'll leave it in the sink for a while. I then pulled away the cooler, and I had a bunch of ice. A lot of it hadn't frozen though, and I carefully got rid of it. At the bottom was a really nice and thick chunk of ice. It's a bit too big though, and I'll have to chop it up. To do this, I apparently just had to make a shallow cut all the way around. Then, when I tap it with a knife and a hammer, it's supposed to make a clean break. However, I think I hit it a bit too hard. This was kind of sad, but I was a lot better with the other cuts, and I was able to chop it into four large chunks. I then ran one of them under water to clean it up, and this was what I was left with. It's somehow even better than I thought it would be, and it kind of blows my mind how clear it is. There are some spots with some small bubbles, but it's still really impressive, and I think that it almost looks fake. Never been with a baddie. Mm, she can't, so I add her to the tally. Oh shit, okay, here we go. Nah, I ain't never been with a body, with a body. She calm, so I added to the tally. Madison Barton calling her Maddie. Yes. Like, Matt's try send me that addy. I talk a lot about other people's science on my page, but I'm also a scientist, and I just published a paper on my birthday, and I want to tell you about it. So in my PhD, I studied the neurobiology of autism. I found that mice with an autism-linked gene mutation actually had too much brain activity and a part of the brain that controls social interactions. This may sound like a good thing, but it's actually not ideal, and it made these mice less social. Then I found that if we turned on this one protein, we could essentially build more red lights in the brain, and that would reduce the brain activity in that area. And doing that actually made the mice more social. But the problem is, there's really no easy way to turn on that protein. It's supposed to turn on when the cells are active, so the only way to turn it on would be to activate the cells. But the problem is, the cells are already too active. So how the heck do we approach this? Well, in this paper, which was just published, I found that we could target a different protein which controls the protein that we want. And doing that activated the same process in the brain and also made the mice more social. Now, the good news is, this discovery makes this way more feasible as a treatment in humans. But the bad news is, mice are not humans, and these types of findings never seem to translate to humans. When I say that, I mean there are zero available treatments for the social symptoms of autism. So this is hopefully a step in the right direction for those who may want a treatment but have no options. An important final note, I stand with the ASD community, and I absolutely do not view autism as something that should be cured. I simply and genuinely am just doing my best to help others through science. So thank you so much for watching and for your interest. This dude hit me up like, hey bro, I'll give you $30 to do a loyalty test on my mom. I was like, bet, how old is she? He was like, she 41, so I was like, bet. So I came in like, hey miss, dot, dot, dot. I don't know if you know me or not, but I know your son. She was like, hey, Xavier, and no, I don't think he's mentioned you before. Did he do something, dot, 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 question mark. So I was like, oh, no, ma'am, he didn't do anything. I just came across your page and wanted to see how you were doing. She was like, oh, okay, well, I've been good, just hanging in there, you know. So I was like, yeah, I know. Wanted to get straight to it, so I was like, honestly, miss, dot, 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 you've been looking good for a long time to me, and since I'm grown, I thought I'd shoot my shot. 
she was like, thank you. And like I said, I haven't seen you before, but I think you're a handsome young man. I was like, handsome grown man, LOL. And you mind if I get your number so we can text? She was like, right, crying out laughing. And yeah, you can have my number. And she said she got an iPhone so we can FaceTime with the cool emoji. toys of all time. This is Flubber, and Hasbro released it in the 1960s, but immediately there were thousands of reports of kids getting rashes, skin burns, and sore throats. They immediately recalled it and stopped making Flubber forever. But legend has it that because they couldn't burn it or sink it at sea, they buried all the remaining Flubber behind a warehouse that's still there to this day. Somebody should go find it. Why did pirates really wear eye patches? No, it had nothing to do with having lost an eye. Ironically, it may have had everything to do with being able to see better, being able to fight in the dark. Let me explain. Studies have shown that it can take 25 minutes for your eyes to adjust from bright light to darkness. This was a problem for pirates when boarding and plundering vessels as they had to frequently move above and below decks from daylight to near darkness. Well, the smart ones may have worn a patch over one eye, which essentially meant that one eye was already adjusted to the dark. When going below deck, they could switch their eye patch to their outdoor eye, allowing their already dark adjusted eye to see their enemies before they saw them. Even pilots today are recommended to close one eye when using light to preserve some degree of night vision. Like and follow for more. So the whistle scam is basically him trying to tell me that I'm going the wrong way so he can take me somewhere else to show me something that I then have to pay him for. That's that scam. These what? The shoe on the right is what vans look like. The shoes on the left is what vans should look like. You see, a lot of people mistakenly think that vans are a wide shoe, but when you look at the ends, you can really tell that the toes are smashed together because the end of it comes to a point. The reality is that this is how many shoes are made today. They come to a point and therefore smash your toes together. When your toes can't spread out, it limits the function of the foot and actually increases your risk for a number of foot issues like bunions and hammer toes. So for the majority of us, unless you have just an extremely slender foot, Vans are not going to be a wide enough. I wish they'd look like that option on the left, but for right now, they don't. 